Hey guys, my name is Phil. Welcome to Phil's Computer Lab and a video about retro gaming on an Android smartphone. I recently had a look at my YouTube statistics and around a third of you are watching my videos on mobile devices such as phones or tablets and a quarter of you are using the Android operating system. So I thought this could be an interesting video looking into retro gaming on an Android smartphone. I bring a new set of eyeballs to the table because the phone I've been using up until now is the Nokia Lumia 930 running Windows phone. A great phone, it's quite reliable, simple to use, but with a real lack of apps and there doesn't seem to be much going on in terms of emulation or retro games. I totally admit that I've been out of touch with mobile technology, but I do like to do online research and in terms of emulators on mobile devices, the Android operating system is simply the way to go. So basically I needed a new phone, so I asked my contact at Banggood if they could help me out. They came through and gave me a budget of $200. Now $200 doesn't sound like a lot, but with these Chinese phones that money gets you a long way. So I was quite lucky one of the phones was on sale and it has pretty decent specs for gaming. The phone I picked is the Lieco Li Max 2. It was one of the few phones with the Snapdragon 820 CPU which comes with the Adreno 530 graphics card which my research told me is one of the top end gaming chips you can get on the Android phones. Banggood also sent me a Bluetooth gaming controller and a VR headset to play with. If you're interested in any of these products I'll put the links down below in the description. So the old Nokia has retired and I've been using the Limax 2 now for around two weeks to give you a fair assessment of what it's like. So in this video we will have a closer look at the phone and the features but with a focus towards gaming and we're going to have a look at emulations and playing retro games. Let's have a look what's inside the box. Firstly the packaging was really nice, well protected. Uh, the phone is inside the box and also a clear cover protector. We've got the USB charger, now this one is for the American market so I just have to use a travel adapter. We've got a USB Type-C cable and also USB Type-C headphones with CDLA technology. I will talk about that more later in the video. And we've got a SIM extraction tool and a little leaflet that shows you how to insert the SIM card. Wings of War on the Sega Genesis is always one of the first games I like to try out, simply because I know that game very well. The emulator I ended up using is md.emu. Now I'd also like to point out that I've never really used an Android device before, but I'm very familiar with Google applications and Chrome, so I found it really easy to get everything going. To load game ROMs and BIOS files, I just connect the phone with the USB cable to my desktop and copy everything across. A lot of these emulators are free, but many cost a few dollars, so I did end up making a few purchases. The apps are linked to my Google account, so I thought it's a good investment as Android really impressed me and I can see myself checking out more devices in the future. All these emulators have the standard options that you expect from an emulator, but are modified for mobile devices. The buttons are overlaid on the screen and you can also rotate your phone which will have the buttons either below the screen or on the sides. The processor and graphics card is really highlight of this phone. We've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820. This is a quad core and we've got the Adreno 530 GPU. These are really chips that used to be in the flagship phones from 2016. So they have been uh, replaced. For example, the Snapdragon is now up to 835, but this is still an extremely capable CPU. For gaming, I believe, and for uh, 199 US dollars, what, what the price was at the time of uh, getting the phone, I don't think you can do much better than, than this. We've got some benchmarks here in the n 2 benchmark. We're getting 138,700. In Geekbench, 1651 for single core and 4044 for multi core performance. And in the Slingshot Extreme benchmark, we're getting 2185. Here we have Contra for the Super Nintendo. The first emulator I tried gave me a few sound glitches, but this one works perfectly. It is SNS 9X EX Plus. Let's take a closer look at this Bluetooth gamepad which sells for $24. It is the IPGA Bluetooth controller and you can charge it with a standard micro USB cable. Press and hold down the home and the X button to start the Bluetooth pairing process and then go into the Bluetooth options in the phone and it should show up. 
Now you can go and configure the emulator, which usually means mapping the keys, but that's pretty straightforward. The gamepad is all the usual features you need. D-pad, two analog sticks, four shoulder buttons, and even multimedia controls. The controller has an integrated stand, so that lets you mount the phone directly onto it and use it like a proper portable gaming device. You can also put the phone on a stand and just play that way. Let's talk about the screen. We've got an LTPS IPS panel with 5.7 inches. It is a Quad HD or 2K screen with 2560 by 1440 pixels. The screen is amazing, really good blacks, the colors are crisp and vibrant and I have no complaints, this is just simply a gorgeous screen. Here we've got the Amiga emulator running Lotus 2 and I had to get two apps. The first was the actual emulator which is UAE for all 2 and then I had to get the Amiga Forever Essentials pack. Now this costs a few dollars and that configures all the kickstart ROMs and makes it legal. And after that, everything works great. You can just mount Amiga floppy disks and off you go. Let's talk about the audio. The speaker is at the bottom of the phone and it can go quite loud. So I've got a demonstration here in the video. When holding the phone and playing games with the on-screen controls, you usually do cover the speaker, so you might have to adjust your hands a little bit, otherwise the sound will be a little bit muffled. There is no 3.5mm headphone port, so Lieco follows the trend just like Apple and many others. You have to use a USB-C port adapter to plug in your 3.5mm headphones. In the box are some headphones with CDLA, Continual Digital Lossless Audio Technology, and the idea is that the digital analog converter is removed from inside the phone and put into the USB connector for better quality. In my opinion, the included headphones sound really good, but so do the headphones I usually use through the USB 3.5 millimeter adapter. So either way, the quality is very good. It also supports Dolby Atmos if that's your thing. Sounds nice in applications such as Netflix. Here we have Ridge Racer running on the PlayStation emulator, and there are quite a few on the market. I believe I ended up using the EPSXE, but there's also FPSE and both of them work fine. Now for this one, you do need a BIOS file, but that's easy to find on the internet. And then you just point the application to it and off you go. It runs at full speed, no slowdown, so really impressed with that. Let's talk about storage and the camera. The phone has 4GB of RAM and also 64GB of storage. Now the storage is UFS 2.0 standard. That means it is very fast. We've got a benchmark here uh, running Android Bench and we're getting 432 megabytes per second uh, reading and 159 megabytes per second writing. Now the phone also has decent cameras. We've got a 21 megapixel with an F 2.0 at the rear. It can video shoot up to 4K and 30 FPS. Now for taking photos, there are decent controls. You can adjust white balance, ISO, sharpening, contrast, and a few other things. However, for uh, shooting video, it doesn't really have a lot of uh, controls. So that's a bit of a weak area. Now it also has a decent camera at the front with eight megapixels and F2.2, and it can video shoot at 1080p. Here we have Mario 64 running on Muppin 64 Plus FZ Edition. Now, the Nintendo 64 emulation is a bit more demanding. The Mario 64 games runs okay, but there are some slowdowns uh, and some dropped frames. So we can we are slowly getting to the limitations of uh, what is possible. Now, you might be able to tweak the options a little bit more. I didn't spend too much time, uh, but the game runs. It's just not 100% smooth. Uh, for example, like with the PlayStation emulator. In terms of networking, where I live, we do have 4G. In Australia, I'm with Dodo, which uses the Optus network. Now, the phone has dual SIM support, but I just used uh, a single SIM. And uh, where I live, I'm getting around 30 megabits per second download. So this is just, uh, we're a little bit behind with the technology compared to other countries. The phone also has wireless 802.11ac dual band for fast Wi-Fi and it's also got Bluetooth 4.2, it's got NFC and it's got an infrared sensor which is very handy because it allows me to control uh, my split system air conditions. 
Now on the store you can also buy mobile re-releases of classic games. For example, we've got some GTA games and this one is GTA San Andreas. It runs great, but the game wasn't cheap. It cost me around uh, $10. Still, this is going to be a good benchmark going forward, maybe uh, with some other Android devices. There are graphic options you can tweak. I maxed everything out and it seems to run just fine. Now we just got to quickly mention the VR headset. We're looking at 24 US dollars and it's got quite a few adjustments for the lenses and the distances between the uh, pupils to uh, make it fit a little bit better. It can fit up to six inch phones and it's definitely an interesting experience. It was uh, fun to check out. It was my first VR experience. Personally, I can't really see myself playing like that, but at $24, if you're not quite sure what VR is like and then yeah this might be something to to buy and just to have a have a go and see what it's like and of course we need some dos gaming and we've got monkey island 2 running under scum vm which is a free download and that game is really easy to uh, control we don't need a keyboard you can do pretty much everything uh, with touching and yeah also the low resolution graphics are uh, suit that phone quite well because my eyesight is not that great so uh, the pixels are nice and big and easy to see so yeah definitely scum vm runs really well and there are a ton of uh, classics adventure games from sierra and lucas arts that are well worth checking out what else is there to talk about? The phone does have a fingerprint sensor at the back of the unit and initially when I set it up that was working fine. However, once the phone was set up the fingerprint sensor stopped working. I believe that has to do with international ROM version or me not having updated the ROM version and I'll talk about that a little bit later towards the end of the video. Now in terms of battery life I'm not a heavy user uh, using the phone very uh, with minimal use. I got three days out of it and that's basically just using the alarm clock in the morning checking the emails a bit of news checking the time nothing uh, not gaming no watching videos nothing like that so Obviously, if you play games, the battery life will be a lot less. However, uh, the way I use the phone, I'm, I'm happy. I don't have any complaints. And here we have our PSP emulator and we've got a racing game here. It runs reasonably well, but there are moments where the audio starts to cut out and the frame rate suffers. So this is basically where you're reaching uh, the limit of what this phone is capable of. Now when you buy a smartphone from China, it might come with a Chinese ROM or it might come with an international ROM and there are lots of resources on the internet how to uh, flash the ROM. I still have the original international ROM the phone came with because I just wanted to test it out of the box and before experimenting with different ROM versions just in case I brick the phone I wanted to finish the review first but I might put something in the descriptions um, how I went with uh, trying out the upgraded ROM version. Now that was a lot of information to cover and if you're still here well good on you. Now I've been using the phone for two weeks it is my main phone I'm not using the Nokia anymore and I couldn't be happier with the Lyaco Limax 2 to be honest for $200 this is ridiculous value and I had a look what a similar phone costs in Australia and it, it's a lot more. Now initially I was a bit skeptical about using a Chinese phone in Australia but now I'm convinced uh, if you after value and you want to have a a phone with higher specifications than what you can get locally. Check it out. Go to the Banggood website. They've got a ton of phones. They're always running sales and specials. So you might not see this phone at $200 right now, but it might be on a sale in a few weeks time. So uh, maybe something else is on special. So all I'm saying is I'm really impressed. Uh, awesome value. This is an awesome phone. Uh, I'm a happy customer so to speak and maybe this is also something for you and that's it for this review guys let me know what you think do you have any experiences with uh, phones from China and yeah what do you think about Android and mobile gaming and retro gaming on smartphones and everything so as always I'm very eager to hear from you and yeah see you soon with another video